In the first century AD, against an invading Roman army, the Druids inspired resistance throughout Wales. However, in AD 61, the Druids were forced to retreat to their island stronghold of Anglesey. Backed by a host of armed warriors and wild-haired, dark-robed women who carried firebrands, the Druids raised their arms and cursed the immaculate soldiers facing them across the Menai Strait. Eventually, the awestruck legionnaires dared to cross over the water, and it's then that the charismatic Druids disappeared from our history. Together with men, women and children, they were burned alive, wrapped in their own torch flames. For three centuries, Romans remained in control. 900 feet above sea level, near Trausvanid, 500 auxiliaries lived in the fort of Tomenemir. The Romans relaxed in a heated bathhouse and sat around a small amphitheater, cheering on fighting cockerels. Roman roads averaged one day's march, that's 19 miles, between each fort. The road which ran from Tomenemir we call Sarn Helen, meaning Helen's Causeway, named after the Celtic wife of Maxen Wledig, the last Roman general to govern Wales. Maxen decamped with his troops in AD 383 in order to make himself emperor of Rome. The Romans left behind them the sign of a red dragon, the Latin alphabet, and the Christian religion of Emperor Constantine the Great, whose soldiers bore Christ's monogram on their shields. This 5th century gravestone in Penmachno was inscribed with a Latin text. Carusis lies here in this heap of stones, and the sacred Kiro symbol. During the Age of the Saints, from the 5th to the seventh centuries, missionaries from Ireland and Gaul arrived in Wales, and a monastery developed in Penmachno. In these days, monks lived in small wattle and daub huts, all grouped around a larger hut, which was used for worship and dedicated to a chosen saint. The area containing the huts and burial ground was called the Llan, meaning enclosed land. The saints also bequeath their names to many Welsh villages, such as Llanberis, which developed near the Llan of St. Peris at the foot of Mount Snowdon. On Bardsey Island, at the tip of the Llyn Peninsula, St. Cadvan founded a monastery which attracted pilgrims from miles around. The bones of 20,000 holy men are said to be buried here. At Clonogvaur on the mainland, the church of St. Beno was a stopping place for these pilgrims who prayed at the shrine of the saint and bathed in the healing waters of the well. Before the final crossing to Bardsey, the travellers rested at the church of Aberdaron, where the sea lapped against the church wall at high tide. But apart from the evangelists, other newcomers weren't so welcome. With the departure of the Romans, the Britons were left to defend their borders against swarms of land-hungry tribes. Irish, Picts, Scots, Danes, Angles and Saxons. Vortigern, son-in-law of Maxen Wledig, retreated to the craggy rocks of Dinas Embris near Beth Gellert from a Saxon invasion of Britain. Vortigern tried to build a fortress on the summit, but mysteriously, the structure kept disappearing overnight. Young Merlin the magician revealed why. Beneath the foundations was a hidden pool in which two dragons were fighting for control of their crowded kingdom. Although at first the white dragon, a Saxon interloper, seemed to be winning, ultimately, Merlin foretold, the red dragon, a true, well, Romano Britain would triumph. In the southeast of Britain, 
the mixed races settled down together. They adopted a common Germanic tongue and the name of Angles, referring to the previous inhabitants as Welas. By the 7th century, the Welas living in the west of Britain spoke a derived version of their original Celtic language. At the church of St. Cadvan in Towin, the epitaph for King En was recorded, not in Latin this time, but in Welsh. The language of Rome was still used though, and when a 20-foot high stone cross was erected in the 9th century to honour Eliseg, King of Powys, his descent from Maxen Wledig and Vortigern was inscribed in Latin. Close by, the Abbey of Valle Crucis was called after this monument. Its name means Valley of the Cross. In the 13th century, the Welsh people were faced with new enemies. This time the Norman conquerors of England. Jorweth the Flat-Nosed erected a timber castle at Dolwith Ellen, and his son lived here as a boy. Llewellyn set in stone his father's castle and built others at Dol Badarn, Cricketh and Castellabere during his battles with the English kings. He also gave money to several monasteries, including Penmon Priory on Anglesey. The monks living on Puffin Island moved over to Penmon and the Puffins, by our time, died out too. Pickled Puffins being considered a delicacy. At Abba Dovey, Llewellyn called a council of the Welsh princes, who agreed to unite under him and proclaimed him worthy of the title Llewellyn Vaur, that is, Llewellyn the Great. Llewellyn Vaur, his wife Joan and their hound Kilhert, held court at several palaces throughout Gwynedd. But the legendary site of Llewellyn's cottage and the grave of his dog are both in Beth Gellet. Joan's coffin ended up on Anglesey at Beaumaris Parish Church. And when Llewellyn died, his stone coffin, but not his body, which disappeared, reached its final resting place in the church of St. Gurust at Llanrust. For the next 15 years, the descendants of Llewellyn Vaur competed for the lands of Gwynedd, until at the Battle of Bryn Derwin, his grandson Llewellyn II defeated his brothers to take supreme command. One brother, Owen the Red, he then imprisoned in a second floor bedroom of the turret of the keep of Dolbadan Castle for 22 years. By strength of arms and personality, Llewellyn forced the English monarch to officially recognize him as Prince of Wales. But Llewellyn II became Llewellyn the last when he marched against the next king King Edward I, and was run through by a spear. As a traitor to England, Llewellyn's head was cut off, a Celtic tradition, and displayed on London Bridge, although the rest of his body found peace inside a Welsh abbey. For a few months, David assumed the title of Prince of Wales from his dead brother. During the winter, King Edward besieged the Welshman at Dolwith Ellen Castle, but Prince David himself escaped to Castellabere, remote in the foothills of Caderidris. Still Edward pursued him. David retreated to Dolbadarn and was betrayed by his fellow countrymen. In London, the two brothers met again. The head of Llewellyn the Last was joined by David's head. Two princes of Wales crowned with ivy wreaths. David's grandson, however, lies peacefully in the old church of Betusacoid. And in the mountains of Snowdonia, two of the highest peaks in Wales, Carnedd David and Carnedd Llewellyn, were named after the princes. <laughs>